The funny thing about Chris Christie is that he has probably achieved what the Republican Party nationally would love to achieve, and that is the image of a, a kind of a tough reasonableness. You know, he's, yeah, he's outspoken, yeah, he's kind of mean, but, you know, on, on balance, you know, he gets it right. That's the image he has. And it's gone so far politically, way beyond New Jersey, that people all over the country think of Chris Christie as sort of like, ah, the Republican you could deal with. And that's exactly what Christie wants, especially as he seeks re-election in New Jersey. And New Jersey is an intensely Democratic state. It voted 58% for Barack Obama, which is one of the highest percentages he got in the country, sends two Democrats to the U.S. Senate elects Democrats to offices, you know, pretty much up and down the ballot. It's not an entirely Democratic state, but it very much leans that direction. And here's Chris Christie running for re-election. He knows that he has to get a great big win in order to be a 2016 presidential candidate. And so he's got to embrace Barack Obama, say reasonable things, you know, generally look like a classic old school Northeastern moderate Republican. What we do in the article is take a look at his actual record. And the truth of the matter is, he is a classic national conservative. He's not, he isn't what most of the media portrays him as, and even what I think a lot of Democrats and even relatively liberal folks might imagine him to be. He has uh, been a strong advocate for restrictions on reproductive rights. He has vetoed funding for uh, family planning, he's vetoed funding for Planned Parenthood, he's vetoed marriage equality, he has dialed back environmental initiatives and renewable programs, he's pulled out of regional compacts and regional efforts to protect the environment. Um, and right now in the midst of his re-election campaign, he has vetoed early voting, you know, kind of buying into the, the whole national scheme on, of Republicans on how to make it just a little bit harder to vote at election time. But none of those things rivals his passion as regards beating up on unions and, and basically taking a, a really harsh austerity agenda into the state level governance. And in this case, he's very much like a New Jersey version of Scott Walker. Not only has he attacked the unions verbally, he actually says he thinks unions are the problem. Uh, he has gone after them on all sorts of levels particularly being rough on teachers and public education, making all sorts of cuts. But beyond that, um, he has vetoed a minimum wage increase that was you know, tied, to infl or tied to inflation, which would have been very, very good for the working poor. He's dialed back the earned income tax credit. And at the same time, he has vetoed uh, any tax increases for billionaires and found plenty of money for corporations, giveaways, things of that nature. So on balance, what you find with Chris Christie is a guy who really is very much in the mainstream of the, the national conservative agenda. He just has this image as something different. And it's going to be very, very interesting to watch as he pivots. Because throughout this year, he's going to run as Mr. Reasonable. But if he wants to run for president, he's going to have to dial up that right-wing agenda as he goes toward 2016. The interesting thing that we say in the magazine is that he'll be able to do that. Because in fact, his agenda in New Jersey has been very, very conservative.